Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I want to thank this Board of Commissioners for the opportunity this evening to share with you our recommended annual budget for fiscal year 2017. You'll find at your seats a copy of the recommended budget, also a copy of the PowerPoint slides so that you can make notes along the way. So I'll begin to give you an overview of a few of the topics that we'd like to address this evening. First of all, I'd like to have some discussion about our local economy. I'd like to tell you about some of the budget de development considerations. We did develop some funding priorities. We'll highlight those and some other expenditures. And at the end, I'd like to share some future considerations. For an overview of the recommended budget for fiscal year 2017, the countywide annual budget totals $430 million. The general fund this year totals $327.2 million. This represents an increase this year of approximately $7.3 million above last year's adopted budget, or just a little bit over 2%. Despite what you may have read in the newspaper on Sunday, our tax rate remains the same at 74 cents per hundred, and one penny on the tax rate will generate approximately $2.3 million. First, let's talk about some of our current year revenue projections. Our projections indicate for the current year that real and property real and personal property collections will exceed our budget by 1.7 million or just a little over 1%. In the area of motor vehicles, as you know, the Tax and Tag <coughs> Together initiative began in 2012. Our motor vehicle collections have increased about $4.5 million since that period of time. Now that program was designed to capture motor vehicles that were not being listed in tax offices. Based on this increase, I think you'll agree with me that this has been um, an efficient program. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Is that, a, is that a cumulative number? Yes, sir, that's a cumulative number. Now going forward, I don't think we can expect this type of increase that we've seen in the last couple of years. I would like to talk for a few moments about our local economy. Financial sustainability continues to be a key consideration as we develop the budget. It appears that Cumberland County really has not recovered from the recession that began in 2008. As you know, the county, the state, and the nation really face some unprecedented economic challenges. But today, there are other North Carolina local governments that are experiencing growth. But I believe Cumberland County remains in a period of what I would call weak growth. And I think the best way to illustrate that to you this evening is by diving in and taking a look at the growth in our property tax values and our growth in our sales tax. And to dive even a little bit deeper, I want to compare it pre-recession growth and post-recession growth. This is a slide that compares the revenue growth pre-recession of our property values. You can see in 2007, our property natural growth was a little bit over 4%. For this period of time, the average natural growth in our property tax values is about 3.7%. Here's what it looks like post-recession for the years 2011 through 2015. This looks significantly different. The average natural growth for this period of time is about just a little over 2%. So what does this mean? What does it mean for Cumberland County? On average, as a result of the recession and the drop in natural growth, we have about $680,000 less in property tax revenue to budget. Over a five-year period, that equates to about $3.4 million. 
Sales tax, as you know, is another key indicator of our local economy. And we'll do the same comparison. The pre-recession average is about 6.68%, post-recession just about 2.5%. I think it's clear just based on this that our sales tax have not returned to pre-recession levels. This chart shows the, our sales tax growth for a 12-year period from 04 through 2016 or what we expect to collect this fiscal year. The gray area represents the post-recession. On average, we have about $1.9 million less available post-recession in sales tax funding. I think you can see from this chart the volatility and see that sales tax is very difficult to project from year to year. I believe these graphs indicate a period of weak growth. As you know, property tax and sales tax account for over 65% of the revenue in the general fund. And historically, we've relied on these revenue sources to fund um, inflationary increases, departmental requests, and to fund um, new initiatives. This extended period indicates that maybe we're in a new reality, a new reality of what we're uh, an environment that we're forced to operate in now let me pause here for just one moment i want to assure you this is not a message tonight of doom and gloom but i believe the best decisions are made if you understand the environment that you're operating in despite a period of weak growth, because we've been in this period of weak growth. It didn't just start this fiscal year. Despite this period of weak growth, Cumberland County and this Board of Commissioners has made significant progress. And at the end of uh, this presentation, I'm going to give you some specifics so that you'll know that we are moving in a positive direction. Now, Revenue trends are very important as you develop a budget, and there are other things that have to be considered as well. This year we had something unique that had to be considered. During this, this current fiscal year, we added 13 income maintenance case workers and 23 time-limited positions. We did that in response to challenges that we were facing in our food and nutrition and Medicaid programs. The total cost of annualizing this action is a million dollars and our portion is $330,000. That was a consideration in developing this budget. Again, financial <coughs> sustainability continues to be a guiding principle. I believe it's important to continue to protect our solid financial position going forward. We developed some funding priorities, all of which are aligned with your strategic plan. First of all, our funding priorities are investment in our workforce, mandates, operational efficiency, <coughs> and capital investment planning. So before we um, move into the expenditure side, I do want to share some revenue projections with you for the coming fiscal year. Ad valorem taxes are budgeted for next year at $153.9 million. We projected natural growth at about 1.1% or 1.2%. That equates to $1.7 million. Motor vehicles are budgeted at $15.7 million, and there's relatively very little growth budgeted for next year in motor vehicles sales tax for next year sales tax are projected at 40.9 million dollars that equates to a two and a half percent natural growth increase over what we believe will collect this fiscal year our countywide sales tax our taxable sales 
continue to lag behind statewide taxable sales. And I want to show you that on a graph. This short chart shows that trend. Statewide taxable sales are shown in blue. County taxable sales are shown in red. I want to point out fiscal year 2014. You'll see negative growth that year. And I want to remind you, that was the year that we had the furloughs, federal furloughs, we had the um, federal government shut down, and we also were facing sequestration. So that was a significant drop. But I also want to point you to this current fiscal year, 2016. Our sales tax and statewide sales have dropped from the 2015 level. I think, again, this shows sales tax are very difficult to project from year to year, and truly we can't use statewide averages as a comparison for Cumberland County. And finally, in revenue, the recommended budget includes an appropriation of fund balance in the amount of $7.9 million for recurring expenditures. This is within the fund balance parameters. So I'd like to turn your attention to the expenditure side this evening. But first, before we talk about recommended expenditures, I'd like to share some of the requests from our departments. The supplemental requests from departments this year totaled $10 million. Included in those requests were requests for 75 new positions, 48 vehicles, $2.8 million in capital outlay, and about $775,000 for maintenance and renovation. With very limited growth in our revenue sources, we had our funding allocation focus, and that was first to, to allocate funding in support of the strategic plan, continue the mission of providing quality services, but most of all, to allocate recurring fundi funding only to the extent that we considered it sustainable in the coming fiscal years. Unfortunately, there was very little of the supplemental requests that we could fund. This chart summarizes each funding priority and the dollars allocated to each funding priority. On the right-hand side, you can see how that funding priority was funded, which revenue source? Was it a recurring revenue source or did we use a signed fund balance? Our fir first funding, funding priority is investment in our workforce. And this supports your strategic goal of retaining motivated, professional, well-trained personnel who offer excellent customer service with pride. As you know, we have experienced a significant increase in our health insurance claims over about the last 18-month period. To mitigate those continuing increases in the new fiscal year, we made some plan design changes that will take effect July 1st. Those plan design changes are projected to equal health care savings in about $2.5 million. These plan design changes will affect the employees as they actually utilize the health insurance after July 1st. One of the largest areas that is affected is in the area of specialty copays and doctor's visits. A doctor's visit to a specialty doctor will now be su subjected to the $2,000 annual deductible and then the coinsurance. As a result of that, we recommend using some one-time fund balance to provide employees with a one-time $800 stipend for full-time employees and then a prorated amount for part-time employees. In addition, the recommended budget includes a million and a half dollars as another contribution and an increase in the employer contribution for health insurance. Unfortunately, this year, 
we were unable to identify sufficient recurring revenue to provide a cost of living adjustment. The recommended budget inc also includes $106,000 to expand our employee pharmacy hours. Another key change in our health um, care plan design is the addition of a retail pharmacy deductible beginning July 1st. Management held over 12 sessions, in informational sessions for employees to discuss the changes and educate them about these changes. We had over 800 employees that attended those sessions. At each session, employees voiced concerns about the significantly limited employee pharmacy hours. During those meetings, I committed to expanding those hours beginning July 1st. These funds will add an additional pharmacy technician and just a few contract pharmacist hours. I believe this recommendation is justified for two reasons. First, our overall volume in the pharmacy has increased about 43% in the last 12 to 14 month period. But I also believe that the volume will continue to increase as the new retail pharmacy deductible comes in place July the 1st. Our next funding category is in the area of mandates. And this supports our mission of providing quality services while being fiscally responsible. And we have several items included under this category. First, the retirement system. The Local Government Employees Retirement System Board has established a five-year plan for stabilizing that retirement fund. For fiscal year 2017, that includes a half percent increase in the employer contribution. For Cumberland County, that equates next year to a $515,000 increase. For the following four years, the employer contribution will increase another quarter percent each year. That's an unfunded mandate. Second, the, the Department of Labor just released a revision to the Fair Labor Standards Act. We believe that revision will affect the county next year in the amount of $100,000. And finally, the State Board of Elections has mandated a change in the voting process returning to a paper ballot. That will require that we replace 100% of our voting machines. I would consider this another unfunded mandate. Funds have been included in next fiscal year's budget in the amount of $809,000 to replace those voting machines. Our third category is in the area of, a, of efficiency, and this addresses the strategic objectives of advancing our automation capabilities optimizing service delivery through innovation and technology, enhancing current services, and creating new service opportunities. <coughs> we recommend a new position in our IT department, a project manager position. As you know, several years ago, we embarked on a major technology transition as we're moving from a mainframe platform that's very outdated to a more updated web-based and server-based platform. We are still in our infancy stages. We have just converted our budgets to our budget software and also our financial software. There's still major systems on our mainframe. And those systems are our HR, payroll, our permitting software with the inspections department, and then our major revenue driver for the county, our tax system. <laughs> we believe this project manager position is critical to help manage the implementation of this multi-year process. Now, while our IT department is managing this transformation to a more modern platform, 
they're also implementing new technology or software related to business intelligence recommendations. We believe that this project manager can assist in the management of the implementation of those recommendations. Without this project manager position, the business intelligence team, the team that actually re makes the reviews and makes the recommendations will be the ones to have to um, manage the implementation. I believe that will reduce the number of business reviews that can actually be accomplished next fiscal year. So I want to pause for just a moment and I think you'll get a better feel of the importance of the project manager position if I show you some of the activity very briefly with our business intelligence team. As you know, our team began with a review of veteran services and the jury summons process. I believe at your March work session, the business intelligence team actually presented their recommendations. They then moved to the food and nutrition program at the Department of Social Services. That review is in the final stages, and because there's been a lot of discussion about food and nutrition, I anticipate bringing those recommendations forward to a finance committee for information in the coming months. Also in progress, our team is reviewing um, central permitting and the inspections department. They're doing a review of our combined mailroom and print shop processes and also reviewing the business processes in our legal department. And these are the projects on the horizon beginning in July, some major projects. They're going to review the business processes in our Medicaid program. They're going to take a look at our environmental health processes as well as animal control and also our processes in the tax department. Our final funding priority this evening is capital investment planning. And this mirrors the strategic plan, the goal of establishing a planning mechanism to provide adequate infrastructure with orderly growth. Without significant growth in recurring revenue sources, it's going to be a challenge to commit to any new capital initiatives such as a consolidated 911 center. This evening, we would like to introduce a mechanism to fund future capital initiatives without a tax increase. The recommend, recommendation is to establish a capital investment fund. The goal would be to annually transfer funds to the capital investment fund. Since we have limited revenue growth, it'd be difficult to rely on recurring revenues, but I think we have an opportunity on the expenditure side by earmarking funds that are currently budgeted for debt service payments. On an annual basis, as our debt service payments reduce or as debt is paid off, our recommendation is to earmark those funds and transfer them to this capital investment fund. In the recommended budget, we've established the fund with a transfer of $746,000. This can be the first step in providing funding, debt service funds, for consolidated 911 center. This provides a roadmap for future capital planning it provides financial flexibility, and it also addresses rating agency criteria that Moody's and Standard & Poor's looks for as they rate counties. We believe this is an excellent mechanism to provide for county capital needs as well as those of the Board of Education and Federal Technical Community College. So those are our funding priorities, but there are other expenditure highlights that I'd like to review this evening. There are two additional new positions that I'd like to discuss. First is the, a recommendation for an assistant county engineer position. As you know, we have a large number of county facilities. We also have a significant number of CIP projects on the horizon. 
In addition, this year we transferred solid waste regulatory compliance to the engineering division. It's clear that addi additional engineering in-house capacity is needed. This will also assist in succession planning in the future. Finally, in the gun permit division in the Sheriff's Office, the recommended budget includes continued funding for a position that was approved in April for the last quarter of this fiscal year. This position will be funded or is funded in the recommended budget through increased gun permit revenue. Other highlights in the area of education. Funding has been included for the Board of Education and the total amount of $78.7 million. That represents an increase of almost $835,000. This is in accordance with the funding agreement. For Federal Technical Community College, current expense is budgeted at 10.6 million. That includes an increase which was requested of $523,000. We've continued our capital commitment of $945,000 that's used for debt service and an additional assistance this year, a one-time assistance with debt service of $334,000. Vehicles recommended. I believe 48 vehicles were requested by departments. The recommended budget includes replacement of 23 vehicles, 17 in the Sheriff's Office at a cost of $830,000. $50,000 is recommended for two hybrid vehicles in our tax administration department. $90,000 is budgeted for two client transportation vans and an animal control, two replacement trucks for a cost of $70,000. In addition, $265,000 is recommended this evening for base level software for central permitting. Again, this is a system that's currently on our main mainframe that needs to be moved to a uh, migrated to a new platform. In addition, $100,000 is budgeted for homeless services and will continue to um, establish a framework with the city of Fevel for providing these services jointly. In addition, $35,000 is recommended for a behavioral alliance position. This will fund half of the cost of that position. This position will be housed at our local Department of Social Services. The goal of this position will be centered around placement decisions for children. The goal will be to keep the family unit together. This position will secure assessments and also secure treatment to keep the family unit together. When that's not practical or um, a, a reality, this position will then secure residential options and also treatment options for reunification down the road. Finally, in the area of foster care, our Department of Social Services services requested additional county funding in the amount of $433,000 based on the number of children in foster care. This funding has been set aside in a reserve account in general government other. And here's what we'd like to do, two things with a, in concert with the director of social services over the next year. First, we'd like to monitor the need for these additional dollars over the next fiscal year. Secondly, we'd like to work with the Director of Social Services in developing strategies to reduce the number of children in foster care. I believe that the initiative I just discussed, the 35,000, having a dedicated position may, may affect, positively affect, the number of children that we have in our foster care. The recommended budget includes funding in the amount of $1.4 million for community funding. 
because of a lack of revenue growth, no new funding was recommended for any new agencies. $129,000 is recommended for our crime lab. As you may recall, this was originally funded through a grant, and that grant expired in May of this year. And finally, $25,000 has been recommended for startup costs for, for our new misdemeanor youth diversion program. The recommended budget includes $4.8 million to continue providing mental health services to our citizens. $2.4 million is allocated for services that are provided or coordinated by the Behavioral Alliance in Durham. And $2.4 million is allocated for services provided by Cape Fear Valley Health System. For fiscal year 2017, we recommend funding this $4.8 million from three different revenue sources. And I'd like to go through each one individually. Currently, the Behavioral Alliance is holding $4 million of prior unspent county dollars. We recommend utilizing $2,250,000 of this $4 million and allocate it for next, a portion of next year's appropriation. Now, I believe this is appropriate because it, is, it does agree with the provisions of our funding contract with the Alliance. The second source of funding is our mental health assigned fund balance. Since the merger with the Alliance several years ago, we have strategically drawn down that mental health fund balance and used it for these services. And we did that as a result of state concerns about high mental health fund balances statewide. At the time of the merger, our mental health fund balance exceeded $12 million. The recommendation next year is to only appropriate $1.8 million as that mental health fund balance is um, de depleting. As it's depleting, we want to start phasing in a recurring funding source. For next year, we are recommending $750,000 of recurring funding. So this evening, We've talked about the revenue considerations. We've talked about expenditures. But I'd like to share a few thoughts about future considerations in the coming fiscal year. First of all, in the area of health insur insurance, there are three objectives I'd like to achieve in the coming year. First of all, I believe that we need to um, prepare for health savings account options for our employees for the fiscal year 2018 budget. In order to do that, we're gonna need to work with employees over the next year and explain health uh, savings account options and what the benefits are. Secondly, management will continue to diligently monitor our health insurance claims. We need to monitor those claims, especially after July 1st, to see the effect of the major plan design changes that go into effect July the 1st. And finally, our goal is to stabilize our health insurance fund so that we're not in a reactionary mode when our claims are volatile. Consolidation of services. Recently, there's been quite a bit of discussion about consolidating the city and the county 911 operations. One goal that I would recommend is that by next spring that we develop a grant request to send to the 911 board asking for funding for a consolidated center in the area of jail health. I recommend that a request for proposal be developed and brought back for consideration by the Board of Commissioners in the July and August time period. I believe that we need to at least explore the feasibility of providing jail health services under a contractual sense. 
in conjunction with this, we will continue to seek cost-saving opportunities with the Affordable Care Act in the jail health program. The sales tax agreement. As you know, the sales tax agreement was renewed for an additional three years during this fiscal year under the condition that discussions would begin no later than January of 2017. I recommend that in the August time frame, we begin to develop that working group. The working group should consist of county, the county, the city of Feville, and representatives of all of the municipalities in Cumberland County. The Public Safety Task Force. It's our recommendation this evening that we reactivate the Public Safety Task Force. As you know, this group was formed and they reviewed public safety issues and concerns over a period of about two years and they actually made recommendations to the Board of Commissioners in about 2010. Many of those recommendations were implemented. I think it would be appropriate for that task force to be reactivated to review the recommendations that have been implemented and monitor the results of those new initiatives. In addition, they should follow up on any initiatives that haven't been implemented and further there's new issues that could be addressed. One in particular is low wealth funding in our fire district, in our five fire districts, specifically in the area of the Beaver Dam Fire District that includes the Turnbull community and a substation. And finally, revaluation that becomes effective in 2017. Management meets with the tax administrator monthly to review the progress with revaluation and will continue to do that and remain engaged in the process. Secondly, planning is already underway to inform and educate the citizens about reevaluation in a timely manner. Third, I believe it would be appropriate to begin having the tax administrator give updates to the Finance Committee regularly beginning at our August meeting. So we're reaching, we're reaching the end of this. I know it's been a little long. Bear with me for just a few more moments. I do want to share some closing thoughts about uh, a term that I used earlier this evening and new reality. I think that what we've shown you about our growth and our property tax and sales tax, we really are in a weak period of growth. For property tax and sales tax combined, we have about two and a half million dollars less available after the recession. I believe that we need to focus on financial sustainability to in, and also focus on increasing the capacity for the most efficient service delivery in the environment that we're forced to operate in. I said earlier that progress has been made, and it has, despite a weak rebound after the recession. And I want to share a few specifics with you this evening. First of all, in the area of education. The funding agreement with the Board of Education was <coughs> renewed in 2014. Let me remind you about 2014. On that blue and red chart comparing statewide and county taxable sales, you can see that 2014, we had a significant drop. We had a loss in sales tax funding during that year in one of the most difficult financial years, this board stepped out and renewed that funding agreement. You have remained committed to that funding agreement. In the area of Federal Technical Community College, this board has remained committed to current expense funding and capital funding as well. Last year, the Board of Commissioners also improved a long-term capital investment plan. You did that to place the board in a position of proactively maintaining and protecting our county facilities. Several years ago, the board approved a pay and classification study. 
That study was implemented over a two-year period in 2013 and 14. In addition, last year, the Board of Commissioners also granted a 3% cost of living adjustment for our county employees. But most importantly, this board has remained very focused in providing investments in technology with the goal of improving customer service and efficiency. And in this year, this board stepped out and approved new positions in the middle of fiscal year 2016. For the income for the food and nutrition program, and most specifically as a result of timeliness standards, um, federal government timeliness standards. This evening, I'd like to share those results. In November, before these positions were approved and put in place, our timeliness standard was at 78%. Most recently, our timeliness standard has reached. 95% and above for a sustained period of time. First of all, I want to com commend this Board of Commissioners for taking that kind of action, but I want to publicly commend Ms. Um, Jackson, the Director of Social Services, and every employee at the Department of Social Services. They have been dedicated and worked a tremendous amount of overtime to achieve this timeliness standard. The result of not meeting this timeliness standard was the potential of losing federal dollars. All of these initiatives and many more have been achieved without a tax increase. So the county has survived the recession and we will continue in the future to make progress. And I believe that progress will continue as we remain fiscally conservative, continue to honor our board approved financial policies, implement the recommendation this evening about capital investment plan to provide for future capital initiatives in the future. And also to continue to support business intelligence, the model, and to support the recommendations from that team. This business intelligence model is our leading strategy for identifying operational efficiencies, for streamlining workflows, and improving customer service. And if we continue to do this, we'll cr create the innovative, high-performing organization that I believe this board is striving for. Here is a um, listing of our budget meeting schedule. We've done something a little bit differently this evening um, with the schedule. We've um, attempted to place on the schedule some suggested topics to guide the discussion and to provide you with the information necessary as you prepare the adopted budget. First of all, on May 31st, our first work session at 530, we'll review the departmental request and we'll also um, receive a status of the CIP financing and the CIP projects. For Thursday's work session, June 2nd at 530, another suggested topic is in the area of economic development. I think it would be appropriate for the chairman of the new Economic Development Commission to give this board a very short and brief update on the activities of that new commission and to also discuss the budget request. In addition, that, ev that evening, we'd also like to provide an update on the Solid Waste Management Department. The following week on Tuesday, June the 7th at 5.30, we'll hold an opportunity for department heads to appeal the recommended budget at 5.30 that evening. Monday, June 13th at 7 p.m. in this room, we'll hold a public hearing for the public for us to receive comments from the public on the recommended budget. And we also have a tentative work schedule planned for Thursday, June 16th at 8.30 a.m. if it's necessary. This has been another difficult budget to prepare because the requests significantly outweighed the available revenue. 
First of all, I want to thank all the department heads and their staff. They put a tremendous amount of time in developing their budget request and also their presentation to county management, as again this year we met with all county departments. I also want to acknowledge the challenges that our new de budget division encountered beyond the revenue growth. First of all, we actually migrated to the new budget software in the middle of budget season, which was a challenge. They also trained the departmental staff on the new budget software right in the middle of the budget process, and they worked with multiple systems to prepare this recommended budget. And I'm going to embarrass them tonight, but I'm going to ask them to stand up. <laughs> I'd like to recognize Deborah Shaw and Heather Harris. They did a tremendous job and they put in a tremendous amount of overtime to prepare this recommended budget. But now you know it takes a village. So there's a couple other people I want to recognize. I want to recognize Melissa Cardinale. She supervised and provided guidance and leadership to our new budget division. I truly appreciate that. I also want to express appreciation to James Lawson, our deputy county manager, and Tracy Jackson, assistant county manager. They kind of helped picked up, pick up other areas when we were deeply involved in budget, and I truly appreciate that. I also want to express appreciation to the many, many staff members in county administration and county finance. They played a critical role in this process. And I also want to publicly recognize the print shop. And first, I need to apologize for the uh, change last minute that I made after the budget was already printed. They were very patient, and they did an excellent job in preparing this budget document this evening. But finally, most importantly, I want to thank the Board of County Commissioners for your support and for allowing me to be the county manager of Cumberland County. I want you to know countywide, we have employees that are truly committed to excellence and to the county's core values each and every day as they provide services and services to the citizens of Cumberland County, and I'm proud to be a part of that team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cannon. Uh, at this point, does anybody have any questions before we get on to, uh, I assume we have. No. I'd be happy to answer any Mr. questions. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I don't have any questions, but uh, Amy's done an excellent job of preparing uh, and commending staff. But uh, I can say this, uh, that uh, anybody that watched this presentation tonight and I know all of us up here feel that way, that the whole entire group, and thank you for your leadership and what has gone on, and, and you deserve to be commended. We, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Again, we, we salute our management. We salute each and every person that had uh, input into this and probably some that weren't named. And, uh, but we know who they are, and uh, we will continue to pursue this document. It's, it's now our document. It's, uh, Ms. Cannon has been relieved of her responsibility <laughs> on this uh, project, so it's now ours, and we will uh, take this up uh, June the 2nd? May 31st. Right? May 31st. Tuesday night. Yeah. Today's May 31st. Okay. So we've got more May left. Okay, so May 31st, we'll reconvene and, um, and take this uh, project up again. Meantime, we'll have adequate opportunity to look it over. And of course, any questions that we have, we can, can get those answered before we come to the meeting and then uh, we'll be prepared to go to work. Anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Meeting adjourned.